Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and today we are back in automation with the Light Campaign V3 opt-in beta. Second episode of Cossack uh, Auto and Tractor. Yes, that is the company we are playing and we have currently just released the Ramona and it is making a massive profit right now. That is looking real nice. So we have started in uh, Ahana, obviously, and uh, let's just uh, check out the markets. Where are we selling these to? Um, it looks like we can't even fill the various categories. Our production is too small, so they end up being sold into weird budget categories and stuff. Well, interesting. Interesting, for sure. Uh, that just tells me that with the facelift, we should try to up production. And a facelift needs to be coming up soon. But also, how much how much dough are we make per month? 13 million. Uh, let's have a quick look at the research. Um, do we want to do research? Probably want to do that, yes. Just a little bit though. Um, we could try to unlock bodies a little earlier. But that is 250k a month. Is it worth it, is the question. Uh, for a company like ours, not necessarily. But I think what would be worth it is to invest into fuel system tech. Because fuel systems are affecting very much the reliability of the car. And the budget buyers are very much reliability focused. So that would make sense to me. So if we spend a neat little 1 million per month on fuel systems, that gives us quite a bit of bonus reliability overall. Sounds good to me. Also, I think we should up our spending on marketing just a slight amount, but to 123,000 a month. That's a decent sum. And it should affect the right categories. As all the... <laughs> All the cheapo demographics basically care about can this car drive? Yes, no. <laughs> Does it fall apart? Yes, no. That, that is what they care about. And then the, the rest is nuance and secondary. But anyway, I plan on making a facelift for... Oh, 1952 is quite far away. I don't know if I want to wait that long. On the other hand, these budget de buyer demographics don't really care. So another thing I could do is try and make a factory for... Oh, that, that's expensive though. Hmm. One thing we should do... Yeah, yeah I, I know, I'm, I'm all over the place right now. One thing I should do is, within the next recession, like once it's down, like once it, right before it's picking up again, we should try to buy some big plots. Big plots that are that we can carry into the future and build massive factories on. Because latest, when Gasmia comes in, we are going to fucking dominate their market with shit boxes. But now let's accelerate. Oh, our shit boxes—they are not selling quite as much anymore. Oh no, there's an upturn again. And I think this, oh, this looks like a, looks a little crashy right now. This won't be sustainable. Uh-oh, it's flattening out already. We did make loads of cash though, so we should be safe. Should be pretty safe. And, ah, uh, yeah, let's wait till 1952. That is where two-shoe drum brakes are coming in. Not that we really need them, I assume, but uh, for our sports variant, maybe. Okay, here we go. Here we go. One more month. One more month thick. We are almost... Back to profit, like back to profit with this. So this is great stuff. Now our brakes should have unlocked, and oh, fuel systems, DCOEs. Yeah, that's something we're going to to put in straight away. Uh, let's check out our research. We're already up to 1.68. Oh, by the way, this is going per month. So uh, unlike in the light campaign, oh, was it working in the light campaign V2? I think we did it year-based back there, uh, and not month-based. So this is actually now working in, in months pretty accurately, and maybe we should change that to reflect this, that it's 
how many months you are ahead instead of how many years you are ahead. Because 12 is such an awkward number to divide by for the, the remainder. Or rather multiply with, not divide by. So, uh, three tech pools there still. How much? So this this would cost us two million to get to four. Still fine, still fine. We have not maxed out yet. And what I really want to check out is our market awareness. Oh, we are at 36%. That is, that is very decent. Just need more production and volume output. That is, yeah, I need, need to cover more markets. Uh, that because we are we are running basically at premium prices. We are running at premium prices, so most of our demographics can't even buy these things yet. So we just need to up production, have in general somewhat lower uh, lower profit margins, but then yeah, then serve a much larger audience and thus get more profit profit overall. So here we go, our first facelift. And let's see, so these are the current numbers with the higher margin and as soon as we um, kick in a facelift, these will reset to what they should be. And I think I want to add a variant. Someone correctly pointed out in the comments of the first episode that uh, you should be with that, that kind of company you're making, which is kind of a shitbox manufacturer with a utility vehicle background, with the tractor stuff. I should make a utility variant. I'm not sure there exists a good utility variant. There should be a pickup, right? I think there's a pickup. Which one do we base it on? Uh, the family, probably. So we clone the contents of that one. And now we... Uh, first we see what what is in there. So what do we have? What kind of body styles can we put in there? Also, I should update the engine. All right, yeah, there is a pickup. I mean, there's a wagon, a little pickup. Let's make it... Oh, this is tiny. <laughs> this is a tiny pickup. Let's make it bigger. Yes. And this cabin is, is just such a tiny little thing. This is looking a lot better, though. Yeah. Oh, oh, that was... Sorry, sorry there. Our chassis is, is poking through. And we're keeping all this constant apart from, I think, a even lower gearing might be adequate for a utility version gives us a bit more and larger tires if we can afford them uh that is ooh, 120 profile now nah, that's not good 110 yeah that's better we could use two shoe drums but that is way too much braking force and way too expensive I set the airflow to 100 so that it gets uh, even more premium reliability. Everything else can basically stay the same. Oh, we might want to have a bit more ride height though. Oh yeah, yeah, that is that's much better. That that one will look like a little... <laughs> oh, that's cute. <laughs> I think if you put anything back here, it will just flip over <laughs> and have its, its wheels hanging there. Fortunately, it's rear wheel drive, so it doesn't really matter that much. Have to uh, put your mum on on the bonnet to to weigh it down. Although in Achana, I doubt there are many many fat variants of that kind. Okay, this is a little ridiculous mini off-road car with no off-road equipment though. It is scoring in delivery, uh, and a little in utility. Uh, affordability is super low, so that might get better. On the other hand, there is a delivery type body for this one, isn't there? Yeah, there's a little van, a little panel van. Oh, this one is scoring well. Yeah, let's let's make that one instead. That's a much better idea. The other one, it's just too small a body, really. And Ahana is focused on a little bit larger cars, I believe. And oh yeah, okay, uh, these ones. Um, where are they? Where are they? Well, it's the utility segment, yes, the utility segment. Oh, what? What is that body type? Yes, 20% penalty. Uh, these guys kind of like the car, but they are focused on large cars. As you see, they're 4.3% size. So, yeah, that's not great. While light delivery, of course, is not quite as focused on large cars. I think what we're going to do here is something 
a little different. Not for this variant. This one will still be the, our new, newest family member, the panel van. But what I do have in mind is modifying these to become longitudinal front wheel drive instead of rear wheel drive. Maybe not for the sport one, but for these two. Because for the facelift, we do have some more time for looking into engineering new, new stuff. So why not use it to try to discover a bit of new tech while this one is still selling? I mean, while our engineers are working, we're not wasting any time. So keep that in mind, that maybe you don't want to, to put in all the new tech with uh, the first iteration, the first original facelift of the car. So not a facelift at all, but like the original of the car, but rather put it in in a first facelift, because then you have all the time in the world while this one is still selling, uh, like uh, like fresh, fresh bread slices or whatever that saying is. And uh, yes, let's do that. So family. Let's see what it does. So here we have a family budget. It is scoring 174.8 and now we switch over. 240? Yeah, that is kind of good. It is very good. We lose all the sportiness, mind you. All sportiness gone. It becomes a proper shitbox. So we, <laughs> we, we finally did it. We produced a proper shitbox. Uh, this is looking good. Yeah, that's a good change. And a bit of tuning, and this is what the markets look like. Isn't it pretty? Get loads of uh, sportiness penalties now. But who cares? Maybe even the sports variant actually likes this stuff. Let's see. If we switch over. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it still has some sportiness. It's low prestige penalty, low comfort penalty. Yeah, no one cares. Mm, the question is if we can save some of the sportiness. We should be able to. Just uh, getting the camber up a bit. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if that is worth it. But the stats are looking good, so I, I, I take it. It's all good. And now for the city one. Oh, that one will benefit by the front wheel drive. So here we go. 190. Lost all the sportiness once again. Oh, and this one we had at staggered sizes as well, because we needed the extra drivability. Well, welcome back, drivability. That is looking a lot better. <laughs> Everything is green. Just about everything is green. Very good. Maybe I should try the same trick for this one, actually. Everything being the same. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Light delivery. Even light delivery benefits from the front longitudinal uh, drive, front wheel drive. So now that I have uh, fine-tuned these already, let's destroy all the fine-tuning again by modifying the engine. Brilliant. Brilliant, killer Rob. So we make a new facelift, we modify both of them. And what kind of update do we want in here? I doubt it would be much. So just a bit more revability, not that we use it. Uh, well, the valve trains is going to, to do much more. Yeah, you can see that we have a much higher cutoff now. Eco barrel has also improved slightly. We had 16.2% efficiency now. And maybe the run ratings, can we? Up, ah, no, compression, not quite. Should we give it much more power? <gasps> One horsepower extra. What a difference it makes. And, oh yes, oh yes, we um, should try to get into using reverse flow. Just to make it slightly quieter, as you see there, it's four different basically. Should make a difference, reverse flow mufflers. That's two good updates. Oh, and for the sporty version, wow, that that will be, that will be insane, insane amounts of power. Uh, oh, maybe not. So we can run higher cam profiles, because it will rev to the moon now. Uh, just check this out. Bam, yes. Now we're peaking at 4,600 RPM. <laughs> wow. Oh, uh, and do we want to change anything here? 12.6% efficient. Maybe get a bit more sportiness. And one more compression in there. Boop. Yep. Question though, should we change to reverse flow or do we want to have the uh, louder baffled muffler? 
I think we leave it at the baffled. Makes most sense for this engine. But now, just theoretically, what could we get out of this one if we tried? Let's take a quick look. We call it the X version. Hmm, so no changes there. We do want to rev it higher, so let's go 65 maybe. A bit more compression. Can probably go one step higher than this. We have uh, a two barrel carb. How much power does this one provide? For, uh, the single barrel carb is enough basically, but um, all right. Better knock characteristic. So race intake, of course race intake. And no, that's fuel that no one has access to. So don't want that. And then we optimize it for mid revs instead or medium high revs. Oh, now it starts knocking again. Yep. Yeah. And now we can rev. Oh, oh, that, that was all already. <laughs> okay, the answers are in. Oh, no, wait. Can open it up. Ho! Oh, there you go. Long tubular headers? Nah, don't even help. Uh, tubular helps. Uh, baffled exhaust, 60. Yeah. Okay, the X race version of this engine produces a whopping 44 horsepower. Yep. Yep. Well, it's a very sporty talk of. It's just a surge of acceleration. Now, uh, I, I think we take that one away. Uh, now we have to throw out these engines and switch in the, the appropriate new ones. So this is the sports one. And now we switch in the uh, standard ones as well. And uh, recalculate the cars. Should not have changed much. It's just in general a little better. Yeah, about three points or so. In each category not massive but then again our engineering team uh, will have another look at these technologies and in case familiarity is actually implemented it's hard to tell uh, they will gain familiarity from this project as well so now let's look at the production if we can't up that a bit uh, we don't want to have a bigger pause in our in our production though so I don't really want to upgrade the factory during our production of that one, but more so for when when it's reaching the end of its cycle. Wow, this is bright. What the hell is going on? Ah, okay. We already loaded the lighting for the, for the actual factory. So uh, I don't want to step up a size in factory because that would mean... Let's activate... That's nine months. Nine months of no production. So that's about 30 million with our current profits of opportunity costs. 30 million. That's a bit ouchies. On the other hand, that means larger production. Ah, so how much is this? Yeah, you have to like click something. Oh, that's 15 months. No, that's too long. So we could upgrade it to level 2. Maybe we should. But that's super expensive. Holy shit, that ex is expensive. How expensive is this? Uh, this is still 80 million? Really? 80? No. It's just a retooling cost, right? This should just be 18 million because we're not upgrading. Ah, oh, this one lags behind one. So if I... No. Supposedly, there's still 80 million of cost. Ouch. 199 million for the upgrade. If that is true. Out of which a lot is tooling. Yeah, we can lower this one a bit and we end up at 11.2. I think this is a good setup still, so let's uh, try that out. So we've upgraded it to level 2. We shall check out the final screens and see uh, how bad that will impact our budgets. But oh, these scores are looking juicy once again. And this engineering time looks really nice as well. And basically costs nothing either. So, a uh, tooling effort can be upped. So, we... <laughs> this is still broken. This is so broken right now. Ah, damn it. Couldn't quite fix that. This is on our to-do list, of course. Uh, yeah, this should look at the... I think I said it in the first episode already. Um, this should look at the original time it took, and then when you are... It should consider the 
the old level to default level and then like look at the difference in time it takes from the old state to the new state with the old calculations so uh, old like original facelift calculations now that would give you loads of more time because now I can basically cheat and just pull it up here and everything becomes dirt cheap to produce like dirt dirt cheap now you could argue that you would pull it up slightly because you have the the time to do so funding pressure should probably come down that will increase costs quite a bit ah this well this is the column where the familiarity would go and there's nothing in there so um it looks like it's not actually implemented yet i thought it was but i must have uh, remembered wrong anyway so pressure comes back up 12 months is our target i would say although we can make it longer just pull up reliability a lot look at how much that changes things like the scores are just through the roof but this is also cheating because the same thing applies with us with the tooling so let's um, just up it moderately and uh, not destroy Let, let's not play completely broken balance wise or completely this feature isn't even implemented yet wise and do what you would do if the feature was implemented which would be something like this can reduce the funding that will make it take longer but save lots of money and I'm reasonably happy with this it's looking good our engines now okay let's do those mmm same here isn't it same here uh, uh, yeah, how costly is this um, automation 40 so we've upped it slightly tooling quality is still good 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 it's all looking fine now let's advance to the engineering for the engines yeah yeah uh, so also here we would pull it up quite a bit to like 75 or more even tooling tooling don't need that much more and then we can pull down the funding and the pressure should still be good let's have a quick look on the final page 14 14 perfect and 9 and 6 oh shit I forgot to upgrade the engine factory should still be fine by the way the engine factory because we're even if the other one is running full I mean this is just ridiculously low production units for um, for that inline three we are building but maybe I should keep it like this because of that they they can just spit out such a massive volume as you can see here that's 4,900 engines per month and how many cars do we produce per month oh okay well that's 6400 cars so yeah i guess we should upgrade our engine factory going to level two yes we are oh fuck me that's some profits uh and some bugs but hmm where do we see here we do no yeah 14 14 9 9 and what are the total costs of this? Uh, ow. Ouchies. 502 million to upgrade this. The whole project costs 502 million because of the factory upgrades. Ooh, what? Why does the engine factory take so much? Oh, wow. Ouch. Let me recheck that. Did I do something stupid? So it's a medium two. Did I ramp up the automation level or something? Uh, well, this is fine. The tooling isn't the issue. No, just seems to be that expensive. All right. Don't quite know where those costs are coming from. And we haven't implemented any tooltips yet to uh, have a breakdown of those things. So uh, let's sign that one off once again. Ready it to be signed off. And let's check our forecaster. So this is all looking good. And we want to break even. How much is the margin? Well, the average margin is ridiculous, but production costs is just <laughs> is below three thousand on average. Well, that is that is really nice. Uh, looking good, looking really good. So I think we can go from here. Our delivery just sucks, but yeah. All right. Um, sign off. Fourteen months. 
500 mil yeah, million. Damn, that's expensive. Let's hope it makes it back quickly. Agree. Gotta invest, invest into something. Oh, here we go. Make me some more profits, please. I need them. Yeah, we're still producing for a few months. Five months or so. Oh, yeah, profits are going up. And here we have, so very soon, our 500 million. Yes. So now we have covered our project costs. Ouch. And now come the big hits. Uh, factory upgrade time. No income. Just another month. And then we have our first sales stick. There it comes. Okay, come on. Boom. Yes, pause there. Let's see. Oh, we are selling... Oh, shit, the delivery. Uh, that one sucks. That one really sucks. We have now 30 months worth of sales in stock. <laughs> After the first month of production. Um, not good. Not good. I think we should... Uh, should abandon this one. How about we uh, pause the production? This can be restarted later, yes. Agree. So let's pause it. But holy shit! That green line is looking brilliant. That's some profits. 36 million this month. Oh, but and this also looks like a recession is coming. A pretty bad one. It's like peak here. And maybe we're forming a... Yeah, with the previous one. I think this one was lower. The previous one here. Uh, that's like a head and shoulders pattern. And now it's going to drop dead from there. Could be a big recession coming. Let's see. Oh, it's turning around. Is this a dead cat bounce? Or is this a proper reversal of the, the trend? Because I very soon... It's so hitting 1955. I need to start working on... I uh, completely new car. That is about the time. All right, here we are. No, no, one, one more month thick. Twelve, twelve. That's December, killer of first. There, 1955. Hmm, this is a very long-lasting dead cat bounce if it is one. Still not entirely sure what's happening. But economy seems to be slightly down still. But if we go into the factory manager and. Uh, Want to acquire a new car factory in Ahana, of course. Oh, damn it, this is so expensive. Ugh. Should we maybe build. Holy shit, this is cheap. Okay. <laughs> the plots in the Lua are ridiculously cheap right now. Hmm. I think, I think that might be a bug. They don't have that much land mass. I need to look into those progressions. Let me make a note here. On the other hand, labor costs are quite a bit higher. Well, we <laughs> almost for free get a huge plot. Ah, it's not too bad. A huge plot with a large one factory on top does cost 700 million. 51 months build time. Ouch. And we can get, ugh, okay, basically the same or similar performance. For, uh, from a production cost standpoint. But the plots are a lot cheaper. So it has way, way more output in cars. But because it's more automated, more efficient in that way, we still reach a uh, cost per production unit that is compatible, or comparative rather, to that in Ahana. And now I'm not going to sign this one off. So let's delete it. That is uh, slightly too expensive right now. Well, how do you delete factories? Well, this one isn't being built or anything, so it doesn't subtract money from me, but seems to be stuck in this list for now. Another thing to fix. Our delivery trim is doing super well now. I'm glad I reactivated it. This is... This has still a few stock months, but uh, most of the production is going into it. This has become a hit seller. But let's have a look around what kind of car we could make as a follow-up to the Ramona. Uh, we are going to produce it in Ahana and also sell it in Dalua. And what kind of car bodies do we have available here? Oh, this is looking good. A small shit box with many, many variants. Question here is which one do I like better? 
the 1955 sedan or the 1955 sedan. Both two <laughs> 2.0 meter wheelbase. Very different looks though. This one has more cargo volume. Considering that we want to be um, make a car that is fitting in all kinds of demographics, I think this one, despite it being but ugly in comparison to this sleek design and more boxy um, Eastern European design. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I choose this one. It's the, it's the space, the cargo space. This one has slightly more cabin space. And we are going to produce it from steel. Pure steel. Aranen power steel. Very, very strong. So, uh, what, what do we go for? Yeah, a double wishbone there and then coil once again. Um, this is something like when you don't remember what you have chosen before. I've, um, I've thought up a system how to like show familiarity in the game properly and that would be so cool. I just want it to be implemented, but that might come in January, February in uh, one of those updates. It's a bit of a bigger task though. I want it to be such that when you hold down a key, for instance ALT or something, that this list, these list boxes um, change style and they become a heat map of your f company familiarity so that you see which component will be the easiest to engineer for you uh, compared to what the component would take to engineer by default. So that would like highlight your usual choices, but also highlight which paths to take in the tech. So that will be super cool once it's implemented. Ah oh, well, this is another dirt cheap car we are making. Still hasn't got a name. I think we need to design a new engine for it. That would make sense. Uh, do we want to go inline four now? I mean, i3s are nice and all can always come back to it and make a new a new variant, but that would require a new factory too. You only have one set of factories right now, can't really afford another one if we want to make a bigger update to this set of factories. So yeah, let's uh, design a new engine. Inline 4 and we are going to make maybe 72? 72? 72, 86? That is... that is quite large. Of course, going push rod and cast iron and just a standard there. And then we start out at 7.0. Cam profile all the way down there. Uh, aspiration. Nope, nope, nope. And we can put yeah, two eco barrels. Mm, we can afford the engineering time. Can we afford the super high material costs. Uh, we don't really need to make that much power, do we? But that could be a switch between the engines, depending on how how crazy they need to go. But twin carbs on on an engine like this, well, they incur more service costs too. Hard to choose, really. Um, they are more efficient though, because you can run better compression if you have two. Well, it's a standard intake. Let's leave it at two for now. And regular leaded. And make it lean. And pull this back to two five once again. 4,800 revs. Short cast. Get down below all the power. 48 horsepower should be fine. And reverse flow. Oh, yeah. Nice engine. Let's see how limited it is. Only by the exhaust. Right. And if we actually put on a single one, ooh, yeah, that's, we lose fuel economy. And we don't actually save that much service costs either. Though this seems to be the better option. All right, and we do have some tech pool here, of course. So the default is plus two already. And if we increase this further, one more step. Almost step. Can we, can we cram something, something out there? Yeah, we, we are going to need much more than 20 months, of course. But then again, how long does this take? Engineering time, that's all fine, but like this. 24 months, and this takes 22 months. So there we have two big vectors already. 
Hmm, how big do we want to make this one? This is now at 19.5. If I go one extra step, this is at tw 23. No, that's too much. So let's leave it at plus four. And then we can add one more click of compression. Can we? Yeah, no warnings. Great. This is all shaping up nicely. Well, I think I'm going to save the bulk of this new design for the next episode. There's, um, there's a lot of work to do here. So I hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time. Yeah.